Hello, welcome to the Friday, April 5th, 2019 edition of the Science and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Xavier got a post today about an old shell shock signature triggering on actually a newer exploit. This new exploit does hit PHP CMS, uh, one of those uh, content management systems. And the vulnerability, well, uh, if the exploit works, does give the attacker a web shell. Vulnerabilities like this, of course, are exploited quite frequently. Now, another interesting kind of issue about this is, and I've seen this against my own web servers as well, that many of the hits that are triggering the signature and also are using this particular payload that Xavier observed are appearing to come from Chinese search engine Baidu. When I saw the Baidu user agent at first, I figured that it was probably spooky and we see this a lot also with Google and such where attackers are using the uh, Google user agent in order to bypass various filters. But looking at the IP address from which these hits came, they do look like legitimate uh, Baidu IP addresses. And Checkpoint released a report uh, regarding Xiaomi's uh, guard provider application. And this application is installed on all Xiaomi phones and is supposed to be a security application, but instead actually opens the user to a man in the middle attack. The other problem apparently with this application is that it uses multiple software development kits, multiple SDKs that don't play nicely with each other and as a result this man in the middle attack could actually be leveraged to execute arbitrary code. Checkpoint in its blog post points out that this is an issue they're seeing more and more and we have seen this in other areas as well, not just uh, with mobile applications, that developers overload their applications with multiple SDKs instead of just sticking to one or a couple of them that actually complement and work with each other. An alien vault found an interesting Python script that is scanning systems for default credentials. They're calling it XW or XVO based on the name of a module within the script. And it has a pretty decent list of systems that it's scanning for, not just web-based, also FTP, MySQL, MongoDB, for example, and then your usual web-based interfaces like PHP, MyAdmin, and Tomcat. Now, one thing that Alien Vault noticed is that uh, this particular piece of malware does share the same command and control infrastructure as MongoLock. MongoLock is uh, ransomware that goes after MongoDB databases, erases them, and then leaves a ransom note behind. This new malware doesn't actually do anything malicious beyond scanning. Instead, it just reports back to the command control infrastructure if it does find vulnerable systems. And the assumption is that these systems may later then be attacked by MongoLock or similar malware. It's possible that the attacker hopes to stay a little bit better under the radar by sort of splitting out the scanning and the attack part, because of course, scans are very ubiquitous and often not really taken that serious. So there may be less attempts to actually get systems that are scanning offline. And for over a year now, smartwatches of the vendor Vidimensio that are mainly sold in Germany and other European countries has been alerted of security vulnerabilities, not just in the watch itself, but also in the web application used to track the watch. The watch is sort of sold as a cheap alternative to other smartwatches and the advertisement around it mainly focuses on the GPS functionality in order to allow, for example, to track kids or elderly individuals. But due to the security vulnerabilities in this particular smartwatch and the web interface, it's pretty easy for pretty much 
anybody to track individuals wearing the watch. Not only that, it's also possible to alter some of the GPS logs remotely. Now an attacker has used this feature to actually alert users of the smartwatch of these vulnerabilities. Uh, the attacker in this case added GPS logs uh, that in large letters spelled out pwned on a map. Apparently 7,000 smartwatches were affected by this particular attack and now nothing from the vendor yet. About a year ago when all of these vulnerabilities were originally released, the only thing the vendor did at this time was actually to disable an eavesdropping functionality in the watch. Well, and this is it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.